Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, today's talk on automated APIs um, for scaling for growing and scaling enterprises. My name is Jeremy Glassenberg, and uh, I've been working on API technologies at various companies, mostly B two B focused, and including many many unicorns and decacorns. Uh, and here we're going to talk about the challenges that I've seen, not only from taking a company from taking those companies who've just launched an API and set up a nice system of automating the planning and implementation of their APIs, and now getting to that challenge of a growing company that's scaling that has multiple teams building APIs, and how do you position your APIs to scale? Let's dive in. First, a little bit about myself. I've basically been working on APIs for a little over 13 years now in a good variety of companies. I was a very early employee at places like Box and TradeShift. I was actually the first hire for the developer platform at Box and I helped these companies become uh, unicorns. I've also worked at many companies that were unsuccessful and learned quite a bit from them. And working with many APIs also as an advisor and as a consultant, I've seen many successful launches and successful scalings of APIs, but also many challenges and many failures as companies grow their APIs. Uh, today, I am working at DocuSign. This is one company that years ago was very small, had one team working on APIs, and now it's a $50 billion plus company, over 5,000 employees, and is currently handling those challenges of scaling their APIs. I've been working with them full time, but in the past have worked with other enterprises as they've scaled their APIs. And that's what I wanted to get to today. So, a little bit of an intro before we get into the topic of scaling our APIs. I first want to talk about design first API principles. Now, there are many talks on this topic. Um, you can find them on YouTube. Kong had talks in this uh, just last year. So you can find longer bits on design first principles and APIs. I'm just going to say that, well, I'm a big fan of design first principles and basically applying product process to APIs. As a very short summary, this is basically about aligning your business model and your developer community with your API designs before you actually build them. So rather than design your APIs according to your backend, you ask, what are the kind of apps you want to see built in your platform? Who are the developers who are, you, who are going to build this? What sort of challenges are they going to encounter? And how do you make development as easy for them as possible? Um, okay, I just realized we lost my screen share. So I'm going to here. My apologies for the complication. All right, let me just double check here. Can you all post in chat and just make sure to just let me know if you can uh, actually see what I'm presenting on now? Can you see my slides? Just post in chat if you can. All right, great, thank you. Just confirming, I gotta make a slight adjustment here. All right. Uh, one more moment here. So I want to first start with that. I assume that your company is designing APIs according to use case, and you are designing your APIs first before you build them. If you do so, there we go. If you do so, you'll find there are many tools available to automate that. Now, I gave a talk actually last year at Kong about this topic. For those implementing APIs with design first principles, what are the tools available? And yes, Kong is a big part of this. Uh, in addition to the gateway, they have all of these tools to fully cover the product development process, helping you through Insomnia to design your APIs and write your API schema first. Um, providing you with the developer portal builder and API documentation for when you're actually ready to launch your APIs, providing you with monitoring to learn and iterate, all of the components that you need to design an API first, implement, launch, and then test your APIs are available 
through Kong and Kong's ecosystem. But this is really just step one for an enterprise. For many of the startups I helped, this is really all you need. Make sure your APIs are designed according to use case. But as a company grows, well, APIs aren't going to be designed by just one team applying product principles. Most likely you're going to have segmented product teams, each of which need their own APIs. Some of those teams may not be aligned uh, in terms of skill and experience and applying design first principles for APIs. But even if all of your teams are aligned, you may have well-designed APIs, RESTful APIs, but not APIs that are consistent across products. And the developers coming in will notice this. They'll see inconsistencies in your APIs. They're gonna find they have to build different apps for each of your APIs. It's just not gonna run that smoothly. And we're seeing this actually quite a bit from the last two years as well. We saw it in 2020, 2021, the tech industry exploded and many unicorn companies suddenly became decacorn companies with thousands of employees. These same companies, some of them have actually reached out to me because they had gone from having one API team to having many API teams. And they quickly understood that once that happens, you have to decentralize your process of designing APIs. So how do you enable this? How do you let teams have the autonomy to plan their own APIs while making sure that your APIs are consistent? And also, what are the tools that can make this easier still? So at the highest level, I emphasize to companies who are scaling, who have just encountered this, you now have more than one team working on your APIs. We're gonna dive into the steps to approach this properly, tactfully, but it's all about um, process, standards, communications, and tools. You're gonna to wanna to get these teams aligned on some sort of standard, get everyone to agree, not just about REST, but other general requirements to make your APIs consistent. You wanna also make it easy through tools and resources for teams to actually act on the plan. Because again, this has to be decentralized. And also, if not most important, you wanna make sure that teams are communicating and collaborating and do what you can to make this easier. Uh, in general, this is done through what's still a central API team, but not a team that's dictating the rules, rather a team that's facilitating. And so to do this, there's usually this one team that's working cross-functionally cross -functionally across product areas um, to coordinate uh, with all these teams and have them work together on establishing that standard. All of these larger companies I've seen, in order to be effective at API standards, they set up an API council. It's facilitated by a central team, but anyone who's working on API gets involved. This is where you discuss and agree as the company as to what your standards are. Going beyond REST and saying, what property names are we gonna reuse? What property requirements are we gonna have in our inputs and responses? How should our error models be structured? So we'll have these discussed in the council, but to make sure that what's coming out of that council is enforced, well, the number one tool is the linter. The linter is basically saying, beyond checking your open API schema to make sure it's nice and restful and proper open API, we're gonna make sure we're meeting a bunch of additional custom requirements that we've set in that council. We're not just writing it down somewhere, we have a way of checking automatically your API design and making sure it meets with our standards. Now, you can set these rules in the councils. You can utilize tools like linters to enforce the rules. But remember, we're not going to have a central team dictating APIs. We need teams to have their freedom and responsibility, the autonomy to plan their APIs while still making sure they're aligned. So a linter isn't just about restricting your teams and forcing them to plan their APIs according to your designs. This is about making it easier to design and implement your APIs while also making sure that each team's APIs are aligned with the standards. The linters, once they're working with Kong, 
can work with the Insomnia tool. So for those teams who are designing the APIs first, they can actually, as they're planning their API and writing their schema, spot in the linter what changes they need to make to make sure that their APIs are aligned according to the linters. And then for engineering, after they've developed the APIs, the linter is there in addition in the CICD process to make sure that the APIs you've built are still aligned with the standards and a check for other things. This is all about just helping these teams make their APIs of higher quality more easily, rather than simply being a means of forcing an API standard on anyone. And then coming back to communication and coordination. And this is another nice thing about tools like Insomnia. As teams plan their APIs, they're gonna have certain functions, certain models, and more central APIs that you're gonna want other teams to get aligned on. And by allowing teams to as easily as possible share their designs so that they can be reusable. Um, you know, here at DocuSign, many of our APIs are centralized around documents, forms, signatures, and we have models around this. And we want our other APIs focused on topics like workflows to utilize the same models. So the developer coming in and working off the different APIs, they get responses in our APIs that are consistent. And it's easier to do if you make it easy for teams to share their models and for other teams to grab those models and reuse them in API planning. This is something that tends to be added to um, API editors like Insomnia. Keep a lookout because this is one of those little components to the editors in addition to the linter that helps your team scale. So these are the key aspects to make sure you're positioning yourself to scale. Have the council, use the linter to enforce what you agree in the council, and then have those other tools to encourage sharing and collaboration. Now, tactically, you're gonna find that actually getting this to work is much more complicated. There can be a lot of little things in getting things from the council to being enforced, to making sure app APIs are well tested, to making sure each team tests their APIs of high quality. Some teams may not be as good about this as others. So the solution, make it easier through tools and resources. One challenge that I've seen frequently when it comes to um, creating API libraries, most companies today are automating this with a tool like CodeGen, an, a library or SDK generator. I still agree that custom-made, homemade uh, libraries are usually going to be of higher quality, but even the stripes of the world are automating this in, in many cases, because whenever you want to update an API, it's nice to have the libraries and SDKs automatically updated. You just update the APIs and that's it. You don't have to manually update SDKs. Well, in theory, this works well. In practice, those of you who've, who've worked on, worked with CoGen or other generator tools, know that these things are kind of janky. They require extra stuff that's not in officially a requirement for the open API schema. And if you have a centralized team that's taking these SDKs and releasing them, which is common, well, there's gonna be some back and forth challenges if, because the, the, those SDK generators aren't going to work as smoothly as you like. So I find it's important to, in your validation process, have something in CICD to let each team make sure that they have in their swagger, they have in their APIs, what is needed to generate these SDKs. Let them run those extra tests, not just make sure your APIs are restful, not just make sure they're meeting your linter requirements, make sure they're going to work with your SDK generator. And so we're talking a lot about the tools around your APIs to design them, to implement them. Let's come back to the gateway because yeah, your API gateway really, really helps. I find it's vital to, for a team working on API standards, work with your infrastructure team and make sure that you have a standard requirement for the gateway that's gonna be used across your teams and the configuration behind it. I have seen this more than once as a consultant, a company that has grown, they have multiple API teams, and they're so disjoint that rate limiting isn't even consistent, and the developer community is taking advantage of it. How do you handle that? Well, let's 
make it so that your teams don't have to think about rate limiting rules. Um, just have them all on the same gateway that you can configure. If you do this, then rate limiting will be consistent across your APIs. It'll be simple for developers and the developer community and the development teams working on your APIs, implementing your APIs. They just won't have to worry about this at all. And yeah, this also really comes up with auth. I'm not gonna name names, but I have seen more than once a team, a company allowing their APIs to get so disjoint that authentication and authorization are happening in completely different product areas. In areas where most developers will want to work across products in one application, what do they find? They have to write different code to handle different means of authentication. They have to prompt their users to authenticate multiple times for access to different product areas. And sometimes security holes are opened up because some team didn't align their scopings, the rules and permissions with another team. How is this resolved? Well, again, if everyone's on the same gateway, you've established then most, more easily the rules for authentication, scopes and permissions, and implement that only once in a gateway and make sure that's reflected across your other API implementations. You do it this way, you're making sure your APIs are secure, consistent, and a much nicer experience for developers to build apps that work across your APIs. And I can go on and on about the benefits of the gateway, of course, but besides auth, besides rate limiting, among those top five issues I've seen tactically in getting alignment across teams for APIs is how do you actually monitor your APIs? How do you track what's going on? How do you collect data to figure out how to improve your APIs? Well, if teams are building their own APIs, then you go to the data science folk who have to take this data from all these different APIs and bring it to central repository. In practice, this isn't easy either. Find the data science folk writing custom code for each API to get data in. They get inconsistent data into a central repository. And then teams trying to enhance their APIs or the holistic API, they find they only have so much data and they have more data on certain APIs than others. Well, in comes in one gateway, uh, which has a built-in, usually a built-in analytics tool. In Kong's case, they have built-in monitoring. They also have plugins for other API monitoring. So you have every team on the same gateway. And guess what? It's now a lot easier to collect data, bring it into a centralized system, in a consistent format. It's easier in your data science team. It's e easier in each of these teams who has to implement APIs. You can set requirements for analytics and monitoring that are easy for them to implement because they're all working under the same gateway. All right, I'm watching the clock here. I know we had a technical complication, but I want to save time for Q&A, and I still want us to go beyond the current tools um, to see what is available to smooth that process of scaling your APIs across teams. And let's look at what may come in the future. Because again, the, the challenge of scaling teams, it's been around for more than a decade, but it's become more prevalent the last couple of years. And a lot of the tooling around OpenAPI is new. There's still plenty of opportunity. I want us to keep thinking about what the future may hold. For one thing, I talked about this in other sessions, you may have heard in other Kong sessions, but the topic of uh, schema decorators, tools that can take an open API schema and enhance it. I have actually coded one that takes an open API schema that's just your API models and automatically generates the definitions of the endpoints, the CRUD endpoints, knowing that in most cases, APIs have the same CRUD operations under one object. And so this allows you to write the majority of your schema automatically. Now, these sort of tools are actually quite helpful in enabling consistency across your APIs by providing these to teams working on APIs and making it easier to get an open API schema out the door. And one that has some of your general standards baked in. There's another tool, Swagger and Flector. It has many purposes, but I have used it for clients who had a very loosely typed API definition where they um, 
when he just said that all properties, all inputs, all responses, they're all just string format. Nothing is specified as date time, nothing is specified as Boolean, nothing is specified as an int. And they start to see the limitations, not just in the developer experience for an API, but that APIs are more likely to be inconsistent across teams if they're not strongly defined. The inflector helps by taking loosely defined APIs and mapping it in a way to give you um, a little bit of a, of a head start in converting an API to becoming strongly typed. By setting your APIs to be strongly typed through tools like this, you're more likely to be able to, to, to establish, I shouldn't say stricter, but more solid standards that your teams can reuse. And let's take another look at the linter. You know, I always say whenever there's something in JSON or YAML format, you can probably put a UI on top of it. We're seeing that today with API editors. They're not just letting you dive in and type out your open API schema. They're instead giving you an input form or a nice mapping interface for which you can plan your API and then generate the open API schema. Today for API linters, I'm not yet seeing this. I'm seeing it mostly written in YAML or JSON, setting your additional rules for an API editor to check and say, here are the restrictions, but you have to write them down. You have to understand the format for the linter. You have to test the linter yourself. Well, I think in time, we're gonna see the same thing we saw in API editors. We're gonna have a linter editor that better provides an interface and tools to test your linter and plan your linter. All right, um, where are we? All right, so I think I'm gonna skip the last couple of what the future holds, but I encourage you all to keep a lookout and think what can you do to contribute to the community to provide these sort of tools to better enable API planning, design, and implementation, not just for one team, but across teams. I hope this is helpful in understanding how to set standards, how to avoid dictating APIs, how to be friendly, how to share, but how to set those standards for consistency and how to keep those teams consistent and coordinated. Thank you all for putting up with me for the last 20 minutes. Uh, we've got a few minutes left for anyone who has any questions. Anyone? Otherwise, I will just throw out there, anyone who's interested in working on a, a linter interface, um, let me know, because uh, I am working with a few different community initiatives to try to provide more of these automated tools to, um, to help with, uh, with API design implementation. Oh, there is, sorry, there is a, a Q&A section, and maybe I'm missing it here. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, ooh, yeah, I do see a few questions here. Sorry for the hold up there. Okay, so I see one. What are some of the design or methods used in terms of security for API to API communication? Um, you know, in this presentation, I didn't talk as much about security. Um, and I won't say I have anything specifically for API to API. Now, I'm not sure if by API to API, you mean internal APIs communicating with each other or writing intermediate code between your API and another API. Um, in general, you know, I, 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 when it comes to API security, I do emphasize A, the need for it, uh, B, 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 you know, macroeconomic data on the percentage of um, breaches that are due to flaws in the API. And key reasons for it is that APIs aren't checked as well as they should. Um, they're not generally not checked as often. Security teams are often less experienced with APIs. Um, and also um, the tools that security teams use are, are not necessarily API uh, focused. Now there are other talks about that and they're many companies focus on API security today, so I'm not gonna talk about that here. But I do emphasize that security holes can come up when teams are not consistent in their APIs, especially if OAuth is, is not consistent. 
if they have different rules around authentication, authorization, they have different expiration rules around tokens, um, scoping. The one thing that I emphasize here is A, have a consistent gateway and try to have everyone under the same auth rules that at least make it easier to watch if something's going on. If there, are inconsistencies, if there are inconsistencies in scope, it's easier to manage with one consistent gateway. And that's the area I would watch, making sure that each team is really thinking about their scopes, but also thinking about their scopes in context of how does this affect other teams. Um, we're, I think, short on time. So uh, whoever asked that question, feel free to ping me on LinkedIn, because I could talk about that for, for at least another hour. Uh, if we have time, I hope we're OK for one more question. Not clear on how you expect developers not to worry about rate limiting. Razzle should know the capabilities and the systems, which services these APIs. Um, so I may have been misunderstood on my note about rate limiting. It's not they don't have to worry about it at all, but we want to make it easier for them. Through a gateway, it's more managed and it's easier to set your, your rate limiting in a way that's consistent with other teams. If for whatever reason a particular product area needs a different set of rules for rate limiting, that can be more easily discussed, but certainly alleviates a lot of risk and a lot of effort. I find for gateways, yes, it's important to know the underlying system, but there's also this comfort in knowing that you have reliable tools underneath there. Uh, I think that is it. We're, I know I'm in over time with Q&A, so my apologies there. If I didn't get to any, any of the questions today, um, you have my name, track me down on LinkedIn. Uh, I'd be happy to connect and, and chat further. All right, I think that is all. I'm not sure if we have someone here from Kong to close things out. Otherwise, thank you again for your time and feel free to reach out to me if you have any, any questions. Take care, everyone.